Agglutination, Wikipedia article audio. Agglutination is a linguistic process pertaining to derivational morphology in which complex words are formed by stringing together morphemes without changing them in spelling or phonetics. Languages that use agglutination widely are called agglutinative languages. An example of such a language is Turkish, where for example, the word eflorinizden, or from your houses, consists of the morphemes evlerinizden with the meanings house plural you're from. Agglutinative languages are often contrasted both with languages in which syntactic structure is expressed solely by means of word order and auxiliary words and with languages in which a single affix typically expresses several syntactic categories and a single category may be expressed by several different affixes languages. However, both fusional and isolating languages may use agglutination in the most often used constructs and use agglutination heavily in certain contexts, such as word derivation. This is the case in English, which has an agglutinated plural marker s and derived words such as shamia lesson s. Examples of agglutinative languages Eurasia Agglutinative suffixes are often inserted irrespective of syllabic boundaries, for example, by adding a consonant to the syllable coda as in English Thai A Euro Thai S. Agglutinative languages also have large inventories of enclitics, which can be and are separated from the word root by native speakers in daily usage. Note that the term agglutination is sometimes used more generally to refer to the morphological process of adding suffixes or other morphemes to the base of a word. This is treated in more detail in the section on other uses of the term. Although agglutination is characteristic of certain language families, this does not mean that when several languages in a certain geographic area are all agglutinative, they are necessarily related phylogenetically. In particular, such a conclusion formerly led linguists to propose the so called Urala Euro Altaic language family which would include the Uralic and Turkic languages as well as Mongolian, Korean, Tamil and Japanese. However, contemporary linguistics views this proposal as controversial. On the other hand, it is also the case that some languages that have developed from agglutinative proto-languages have lost this feature. For example, contemporary Estonian, which is so closely related to Finnish that the two languages are mutually intelligible, has shifted towards the fusional type. Examples of agglutinative languages include the Uralic languages, such as Finnish, Estonian, and Hungarian. These have highly agglutinated expressions in daily usage, and most words are bisyllabic or longer. Grammatical information expressed by adpositions in Western Indo-European languages is typically found in suffixes. Americas Hungarian uses extensive agglutination in almost all and any part of it. The suffixes follow each other in special order, and can be heaped in extreme amount, resulting words conveying complex meanings in very compact form. An example is FIA a copyright I where the root FI means sun, the subsequent four vowels are all separate suffixes, and the whole word means of his slash her sons. The nested possessive structure and expression of plurals is quite remarkable. Almost all Austronesian languages, such as Malay, and most Philippine languages, also belong to this category thus enabling them to form new words from simple base forms. The Indonesian and Malay word Mempertagungjawabkan is formed by adding active voice, causative, and transitive affixes to the compound verb Tangungjawab, which means to account for. In Tagalog, Nakakapagbabagabag is formed from the root Bajabag. Constructed Japanese is also an agglutinating language, 
adding information such as negation, passive voice, past tense, honorific degree, and causality in the verb form. Common examples would be hater a etc., which combines causative, passive, or potential, and conditional conjugations to arrive at two meanings depending on context if had been made to work. And if could make work, and to beta kunikata, which combines desire, negation, and past tense conjugations to mean I slash he slash she slash they did not want to eat. Turkish, along with all other Turkic languages, is another agglutinating language, as an extreme example, the expression a akola vakiela plus or minus lita plus or minus ramada plus or minus clara plus or minus ma plus or minus z danma plus or minus isa plus or minus na plus or minus zakasa plus or minus na is pronounced as one word in Turkish, but it can be translated into English as as if you were one of those whom we could not make resemble the Czechoslovakian people. All Dravidian languages, including Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, and Tamil, are agglutinative. Agglutination is used to very high degrees both in the conversational and in the standardized written form of Telugu. Fictional Agglutination is also a notable feature of the Basque. The conjugation of verbs, for example, is done by adding different prefixes or suffixes to the root of the verb, dokertzat, which means I bring them, is formed by de, kar, ze, and t. Another example would be the declination, it see an equals in the house where it se equals house. Slots Agglutination is used very heavily in most Native American languages, such as the Inuit languages, Nahuatl, Mapudungan, Quechua, Tzutajil, Kakaikal, Chapalachi, and Kayak, where one word can contain enough morphemes to convey the meaning of what would be a complex sentence in other languages. Conversely, Navajo contains affixes for some uses, but overlays them in such unpredictable and inseparable ways that it is often referred to as a fusional language. Suffixing or prefixing Esperanto is a constructed auxiliary language with highly regular grammar and agglutinative word morphology. See Esperanto vocabulary. Newspeak is a fictional language in 1984 based on the sole goal of agglutination, as expressed by the character Syme, every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word for instance, using the root word good we can form words such as goodly, plus good, double plus good, and ungood. Words with comparative and superlative meanings are also simplified, so better becomes gooder, and best becomes goodest. In the context of quantitative linguistics As noted above, it is a typical feature of agglutinative languages that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between suffixes and syntactic categories. For example, a noun may have separate markers for number, case, possessive or conjunctive usage etc. The order of these affixes is fixed, so we may view any given noun or verb as a stem followed by several inflectional slots i.e. positions in which inflectional suffixes may occur. It is often the case that the most common instance of a given grammatical category is unmarked, i.e. the corresponding affix is empty. The number of slots for a given part of speech can be surprisingly high. For example, a finite Korean verb has seven slots. Moreover, Passive and causative verbal forms can be derived by adding suffixes to the base, which could be seen as the null th slot, however, passives are not as commonly used as in English and many verbs do not allow passivization at all. Even though some combinations of suffixes are not possible, over 400 verb forms may be formed from a single base.
Here are a few examples formed from the word root ga to go, the numbers indicate which slots contain non-empty suffixes. Although most agglutinative languages in Europe and Asia are predominantly suffixing, the Bantu languages of Southern Africa are known for a highly complex mixture of prefixes, suffixes, and reduplication. A typical feature of this language family is that nouns fall into noun classes. To each noun class, there are specific singular and plural prefixes, which also serve as markers of agreement between the subject and the verb. Moreover, the noun determines prefixes of all words that modify it and subject determines prefixes of other elements in the same verb phrase. Phonetics and agglutination For example, the Swahili nouns toto and tu fall into class 1, with singular prefix m and plural prefix wa. The noun taboo falls into class 7, with singular prefix key and plural prefix 6. The following sentences may be formed. Extremes ULE1SG that Taburu, Tibetai, Tibetakunau, Tibetakunakata M21SG person Mmoha1SG1 7. Imperative suffix ra combines with the root ga to express imperative, gara go, 7. If we want to express proposition rather than command, the propoitive mood marker is used, ja instead of ra, gaja let's go, 5 and 7. If the speaker wants to show respect for the hearer, he uses the politeness marker ni a, e. Various mood markers may be simultaneously used, gap nida he is going, gap ni ka, is he going, 6, retrospective aspect, John i jibga daora i observed that John was going home and now I am reporting that to you, 7, simple indicative, senseng nim i jibiganda the teacher is going home, 5 and 7, politeness towards the hearer, Senseng nimai jibi gap nida or senseng nimai jibi gao the teacher is going home, 1 and 7, respect towards the subject, senseng nimai jibi ga sinda the teacher is going home, 1, 5 and 7, two kinds of politeness in one sentence. Senseng nimai jibi ga sayo yo or senseng nimai jibi ga sip nida the teacher is going home. 2, 3, and 7. Past forms. John I hack yo e g a s s d slash gat ta John has gone to school. John I hack yo e gasi asta slash gasio ta John has been to school. 4 and 7. First person modal. Na g a na i l g a jesta slash g a get ta I will go tomorrow. 4 and 7. Third person modal. John I na I l g a justice slash g a get ta I suppose that John will go tomorrow. John I e o j e gas justice slash get get ta I suppose that John left yesterday. Emery for one s g ta. Other uses of the words agglutination and agglutinative. Agglutinative languages in natural language processing. Ali 1 sg he passed. Consonant gradation, meaning that there is alternation between certain pairs of consonant clusters such that one member of the pair appears at the beginning of an open syllable and the other at the beginning of a closed syllable, vowel harmony, meaning that only specific subclasses of vowels coexist in a non-compounded word. Ye 7 sg rel it. Ki Soma 7 SG read. Ki Ali 7 SG that. Ki Dabu 7 SG book. Kirifa 7 SG long. That one tall person who read that long book. Bibliography. WALE 1 PL that. WA 2 1 PL person. WA Wheelie 1 PL 2.
WA Rifa 1 PL tall. WA Lee 1 PL he passed. 07 PL relit. 6 Soma 7 PL read. 6 LE 7 PL that. 6 Taboo 7 PL book. 6 Rifa 7 PL long. Those two tall people who read those long books. We have already mentioned the fact that most languages include inflectional, agglutinative, and isolating constructions side by side. The American linguist Joseph Harold Greenberg in his 1960 paper proposed to use the so-called agglutinative index to calculate a numerical value that would allow a researcher to compare the degree of agglutinativeness of various languages. For Greenberg, agglutination means that the morphs are joined only with slight or no modification. A morpheme is said to be automatic if it either takes a single surface form, or if its surface form is determined by phonological rules that hold in all similar instances in that language. A morph juncture a euro a position in a word where two morphs meet a euro is considered agglutinative when both morphemes included are automatic. The index of agglutination is equal to the average ratio of the number of agglutinative junctures to the number of morph junctures. Languages with high values of the agglutinative index are agglutinative and with low values of the agglutinative index are fusional. In the same paper, Greenberg proposed several other indices, many of which turn out to be relevant to the study of agglutination. The synthetic index is the average number of morphemes per word, with the lowest conceivable value equal to 1 for isolating languages and real-life values rarely exceeding 3. The compounding index is equal to the average number of root morphemes per word. The derivational, inflectional, prefixial, and suffixial indices correspond respectively to the average number of derivational and inflectional morphemes, prefixes and suffixes. Here is a table of sample values. The one-to-one -one relationship between an affix and its grammatical function may be somewhat complicated by the phonological processes active in the given language. For example, the following two phonological phenomena appear in many of the Uralic languages. Several examples from Finnish will illustrate how these two rules and other phonological processes lead to diversions from the basic one-to-one -one relationship between morphs and their syntactic and semantic function. No phonological rule is applied in the declension of Taylor House. However, the second example illustrates several kinds of phonological phenomena. It is possible to construct artificially extreme examples of agglutination, which have no real use, but illustrate the theoretical capability of the grammar to agglutinate. This is not a question of long words, because some languages permit limitless combinations with compound words, negative clitics or such which can be expressed with an analytic structure in actual usage. English is capable of agglutinating morphemes of solely Germanic origin, as unwholesomeness, but generally speaking the longest words are assembled from forms of Latin or ancient Greek origin. The classic example is anti-disestablishmentarian. Agglutinative languages often have more complex derivational agglutination than isolating languages, so they can do the same to a much larger extent. For example, in Hungarian, a word such as elnemzasia itlnathidi lensa copyright neck, which means for undenationalization ability can find actual use. The same way, there are the words that have meaning but probably are never used such as Lech Sleg Megzintsa copyright Ktilana Tetha Tetl Nebibjiteka copyright NT, which means like the most of most undesecratable ones of you, but is hard to decipher even for native speakers. Using inflectional agglutination, these can be extended. For example, 
the official Guinness World Record is Finnish EPAJ Air Gestalmalis Ditama TTA Midella NSA Kainka Ha and I wonder if a Euro even with his slash her quality of not having been made unsystematized. It has the derived word EPAJ Air Gestalmalis Ditama TTA MYYS as the root and is lengthened with the inflectional endings LLA NSA Kainka Ha N. However, this word is grammatically unusual, because ka an also is used only in negative clauses, but ka only in question clauses. A very popular Turkish agglutination is a akola vakyela plus or minus lita plus or minus ramada plus or minus clara plus or minus ma plus or minus z danma plus or minus isa plus or minus na plus or minus z meaning you are said to be one of those that we couldn't manage to convert to a Czechoslovak. This historical reference is used as a joke for the individuals who are hard to change or those who stick out in a group. On the other hand, a fiankara isar la plus or minus lita plus or minus rebel diklarimizdan mi isanisisan is a longer word that does not surprise people and means as if you are one of the people that we made resemble from a fiankara isar. A recent addition to the claims has come with the introduction of the following word in Turkish muvafakiyat sizi idiris ali idirivari mi balesklarimizdan mi isanisisan which means something like as if you are one of those that we cannot easily convert into an unsuccessful person maker. Georgian is also a highly agglutinative language. For example, the word gadmo sakonpa revolya sealebel bisner by sat visico would mean said that it is also for those who are like the ones who need to be to again slash back counter revolutionized. Aristophanes comedy assembly women includes the Greek word I I I Euro I plus or minus I I A I I I one fourth I plus or minus I I A I I plus or minus I I A I superscript three I plus or minus I I I A I degree I I plus or minus I one half I superscript one I A I I I superscript one I I plus or minus I one half I A I I I superscript one I one fourth A I I euro I A I I I superscript one I one fourth I one fourth I plus or minus I I A superscript one I I I superscript one I A I degree I plus or minus I I plus or minus I superscript two I A I one fourth I I I superscript one I I A I degree I plus or minus I I plus or minus I degree I I I a I one fourth I I one half I A I degree I superscript one I I A I I euro I superscript one A I degree I I I A I I plus or minus I I I A I Euro I I I superscript one I I A I plus or minus I I I degree I I I I I one half A I I Euro I I A I degree I I I plus or minus I I I superscript one I A I degree I superscript one I superscript three I degree I I A I Euro I I I I superscript one I A I I plus or minus I superscript three A superscript three I A superscript one I I plus or minus I superscript one I A I superscript two I plus or minus I I A I I I plus or minus I superscript three I plus or minus I one half I A I euro I I I I I superscript three I per thousand I one half, a fictional dish named with a word that enumerates its ingredients. It was created to ridicule a trend for long compounds in Attic Greek at the time. Slavic languages are not considered agglutinative but fusional. However, extreme derivations similar to ones found in typical agglutinative languages do exist. A famous example is the Bulgarian word one half n euro three fourth n superscript two three fourth degree three fourth one half n n n three fourth n three fourth superscript two degree n n n superscript two superscript two degree superscript one n, meaning don't speak against the constitution and secondarily don't act against the constitution. It is composed of just three roots, n euro three fourth n superscript two against degree three fourth one half n n n n constitution a loan word and therefore devoid of its internal composition and n three fourth superscript two three fourth word the remaining are bound morphemes for negation noun intensifier 
noun to verb conversion, imperative mood second person plural ending. It is rather unusual, but finds some usage, e.g. newspaper headlines on July 13, 1991, the day after the current Bulgarian constitution was adopted with much controversies, debate, and even scandals. The words agglutination and agglutinative come from the Latin word agglutinare, to glue together. In linguistics, these words have been in use since 1836, when Wilhelm von Humboldt's posthumously published work Ao über die Verschiedenheit der Menschlichen Sprachbos und ihren Einfluhe auf die Geistige Entwicklung der Menschen Geschlex introduced the division of languages into isolating, inflectional, agglutinative and incorporating. Especially in some older literature, agglutinative is sometimes used as a synonym for synthetic. In that case, it embraces what we call agglutinative and inflectional languages, and it is an antonym of analytic or isolating. Besides the clear etymological motivation, this more general usage is justified by the fact that the distinction between agglutinative and inflectional languages is not a sharp one, as we have already seen. In the second half of the 19th century, Many linguists believed that there is a natural cycle of language evolution, function words of the isolating type are glued to their head words, so that the language becomes agglutinative, later morphs become merged through phonological processes, and what comes out is an inflectional language, finally inflectional endings are often dropped in quick speech, inflection is omitted and the language goes back to the isolating type. The following passage from Lord demonstrates well the whole range of meanings that the word agglutination may have. Consists of the welding together of two or more terms constantly occurring as a syntagmatic group into a single unit, which becomes either difficult or impossible to analyze thereafter. Agglutination takes various forms. In French, welding becomes complete fusion. Latin hank horum at this hour is the French adverbial unit encore. Old French two jurors becomes to jurors, and de sja to copyright ja. In English, on the other hand, apart from rare combinations such as goodbye from God be with you, walnut from Wales nut, window from wind eye, the units making up the agglutinated forms retain their identity. Words like blackbird and beefeater are a different kettle of fish, they retain their units but their ultimate meaning is not fully deducible from these units. In natural language processing, languages with rich morphology pose problems of quite a different kind than isolating languages. In the case of agglutinative languages, the main obstacle lies in the large number of word forms that can be obtained from a single root. As we have already seen, the generation of these word forms is somewhat complicated by the phonological processes of the particular language. Although the basic one-to-one -one relationship between form and syntactic function is not broken in Finnish, the authoritative institution Kotamason Kielten Tudkimuskiskus lists 51 declension types for Finnish nouns, adjectives, pronouns, and numerals. Even more problems occur with the recognition of word forms. Modern linguistic methods are largely based on the exploitation of corpora, however, when the number of possible word forms is large, any corpus will necessarily contain only a small fraction of them. Hagia claims that computer space and power are so cheap nowadays that all possible word forms may be generated beforehand and stored in a form of a lexicon listing all possible interpretations of any given word form. According to Hagia, it is the disambiguation of these word forms which is difficult. Other authors do not share Hagia's view that space is no issue and instead of listing all possible word forms in a lexicon, 
word form analysis is implemented by modules which try to break up the surface form into a sequence of morphemes occurring in an order permissible by the language. The problem of such an analysis is the large number of morpheme boundaries typical for agglutinative languages. A word of an inflectional language has only one ending and therefore the number of possible divisions of a word into the base and the ending is only linear with the length of the word. In an agglutinative language, where several suffixes are concatenated at the end of the word, the number of different divisions which have to be checked for consistency is large. This approach was used for example in the development of a system for Arabic, where agglutination occurs when articles, prepositions, and conjunctions are joined with the following word and pronouns are joined with the preceding word. See etal for more details. For instance, the Turkic language family is a well-established language family, as is each of the Uralic, Mongolian, and Tunguzic families. What is controversial, however, is whether or not these individual families are related as members of an even larger family. The possibility of an Altaic family, comprising Turkic, Mongolian, and Tunguzic, is rather widely accepted, and some scholars would advocate increasing the size of this family by adding some or all of Uralic, Korean and Japanese. For instance, the study of word order universals by Greenberg, Universals of Language, MIT Press, Cambridge, Mass, 1963, pages 73A Euro 112 showed that if a language has verb final word order, then it is highly probable that it will also have postpositions rather than prepositions and that it will have genitives before the noun. Thus, if we find two languages that happen to share the features, verb final word order, postpositions, prenominal genitives, then the CO occurrence of these features is not evidence for genetic relatedness. Many earlier attempts at establishing wide-ranging genetic relationships suffer precisely from failure to take this property of typological patterns into account. Thus the fact that Turkic languages, Mongolian languages, Tunguzic languages, Korean and Japanese share all of these features is not evidence for their genetic relatedness. Flexivna tip j e nejva one half razna g zastupan v estonatina. Projevuj s e congruenka, nedostat composivna c h suffixa, v a ta a homonymia a synonymia atalica alterna semi, a three fourth e s e dum luvat o arezina one half c h declinaka c h. Concavki j so v a ta inu phonologic e ridiakova New York. Taka 3 4th Eastra Sija Slabia. No same as stat nost. However, it is not the morphology itself that is causing the headache a euro with today a euro trademark s cheap space and power, simply listing all the thinkable forms in an appropriately hashed list is ok a euro but eat a euro trademark s the disambiguation problem which is apparently more difficult for such morphologically rich languages than for the analytical ones.